Hi everyone, welcome to another live stream, Crypto Tips. Uh, my name is Heidi. And I'm Toby. And we're talking to you today about deleveraging the status of other fiat currencies outside of the US dollar because other currencies do exist. Um, the announcement of unlimited QE uh, by the Fed today. That's crazy. And Craziness. Like this is, this is the biggest news I've ever heard, yeah. probably. So never seen any like <laughs> anything like it. A lot, a lot of uh, as is normal for like the past what two weeks. People are nuts. More and more news is coming out, and so we're going to continue to do these live streams to talk about it, get a conversation going, try to bring the awareness out because with coronavirus and everyone staying home, you know. We got to talk about it yeah. and keep the community going. So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining in. If you are here live in the chat at any point during this live stream, go ahead and say hi in the comments. Let us know where you're coming from if you want to do that. Um, yeah. So hey, Terry. Hey, Pioca from Poland again. Good to see you here again. Hey, everyone. Cool. So get into it. Okay, let's get into it. We got some big so, news. <laughs> for those of you who might have been waiting um, for this live stream to start, I had some really great links, I think, for information in the video description. And I encourage you guys to check those out. Really informative articles. What do you need? I just need to see the comments. There oh, yeah. Uh, really informative articles and uh, a video uh, interview kind of talk with Raul Paul talking about secular and cyclical cycles and why they occur and and yeah so let me ask this huh uh, ip says toby are, are you comfortable with btc btc assets at this time yes i am comfortable with my position um i have cash on hand because i have no idea how much deleveraging will be happening right now and we'll get into that in, yeah, in, we're in, gonna in get a little into bit that, yeah, yeah. But maybe he was talking about short term and long term. Short term, I have no clue, and I, I honestly don't care. Exactly, I don't That's care. What I'm say. We don't care. <laughs> like bring it on, whatever yeah. they do to this price. Because it seems like care. each decision that the Fed continues to make, it just solidifies the existence of Bitcoin, why it was created, yeah. and how it's different. So yeah. anyway, talking about deleveraging, this is a few people have been bringing up this issue. Uh, for example, this article was written back in 2016, um, and it's something that a, a lot of times in this space, uh, this like kind of um, <laughs> not mainstream media crypto crowd, uh, people trying to figure out what's really happening with the economy. It seems like sometimes they're trying to say like, you know, it's always going to come down. There's always something horrible happening. It can't possibly last any longer. But um, anyway talking bringing it back to cycles and the fact that that is what we're seeing is the end of a cycle or a really big transition po transition point between an inflationary period and how the fed reacts with adjusting the inflation rates but so anyway this article that i keep talking about is called uh the four horsemen of the global deleveraging apocalypse part two a neutrino debt bomb <laughs> um it's a really interesting article talks about debt and kind of our mentality towards debt and how that has lent itself to us being in the situation where we are. Um, there's a few really uh, good quotes here. Let me f find one for you. Uh, he talks about uh, the Keynesian economics, uh, economists versus Austrians, how they're different, and how uh, this particular, the macro ops company doesn't really fall securely in either of those crowds or kind of in the middle, which I uh, appreciate finding kind of as unbiased <laughs> of an article about something like this as you can, I think is good. But so talking about debt and let's see. Um, okay. Credit is like a drug. We are addicted to shots of dopamine that we receive every time we purchase something. We are literally programmed to overvalue present rewards and greatly underestimate future costs. So it talks about kind of like the settlement layer of credit. Um, 
doesn't really happen until cash has been transferred. When you pay with cash for something, that uh, transaction is settled right then and there. When you pay with credit, it is kind of kicked uh, further down the road. Um, on a personal level, that's pretty easy to understand. But when you're thinking of like global economics and countries and debt and fi and how people finance their debt, people take out more debt to <laughs> service the debt that they already have, which is what we're kind of seeing right now. Um, but it, it kind of at least helps us, for those of us who, who might need a reminder that, you know, other people aren't so aware of the dangers of debt, uh, this is why this kind of mindset of the masses is, is happening because uh, the, the what do you call it? <laughs> Immediate gratification of buying something with credit. Instant gratification. Yeah. And, and that, how that essentially yeah. kind of creates money out of nothing, even though we're not the Fed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, and then again, this talks about cycles and the short-term debt cycle, otherwise known as a business cycle, um, it occurs every five to seven years. They result from the easing and tightening of funny by of money by the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, pretty much how they adjust their interest rates to uh, assess or, or to kind of control the rate of credit and um, how, how easy it is for people to take out credit and things. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty much what we're seeing here. Again, through this article, it talks about the cycles and there's like the the business cycle, which is like a five to seven year. And then there's like the secular cycle, which is like the long term cycle every 25 to 50 years. And when that switch happens, we saw it in the 30s and how the Fed reacted to that and how that created the Great Depression. Um, <laughs> this compared, there's a lot of a lot of comparisons, I think, will we'll, yeah, be continued yeah. to be made between the events leading up to the Great Depression and what we are seeing right now, there's yeah. a lot of similarities. Yeah. So, what do you, do you have some thoughts on that? I mean, I mean, people weren't in, in as much debt exactly back then, so that's that's huge right now. And then now they're like so indebted. You have so much like student loan debt, mortgage debt, everything's just debt. You know what I mean? And here, here it says total debt accumulates over the long term as shown in the chart. You can see the two debt mountain peaks, one in 1929 where the total debt peaked at 260% compared to the gross domestic product. So uh, there is 260% more debt compared to what is being produced from the economy. And now, well, this article again was written in 2016, so <laughs> I can only imagine how much <clears throat> more debt. But at the at this time, it was at 380 percent to the gross domestic product. So it's like double. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of of the Great Depression. Yeah, I mean, and now I mean, it's it's absurd. Yeah. Like I, we don't even know how much they've actually printed. They've just said that unlimited QE. What does that mean? What, what does that mean? Does that mean they can print, they're just going to buy up everything? Because they're so, seriously going to mm -hmm. nationalize everything. And then... Because there's you, a reason for printing this money. It's not just to hold uh, it in the it's bank. Also, it's, not, to, it's also not to help you guys either. Yeah. Like, they're going to own everything. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, the, the Fed's dead. No, the Fed's not dead. If they were dead, they wouldn't be buying up everything. They wouldn't be buying up corporate debt, mm -hmm. which is like essentially credit fault swaps, you know, like if a company's going under, they're going to buy out the company's debt. That's like, that's really dangerous, you know, because that's, I mean, in the bank, back in 2008, the banks did that. I mean, that's what happened to the banks. Mm -hmm. You know, they bailed out the banks pretty much. Well, this is like every single industry. I, I mean, they literally just announced QE Infinity. They can literally buy up anything now. And so that's that's you, the problem. I did mean, did you see the clip of the guy? I saw it on Instagram. Um, I think it was like a, some kind of ABC, NBC interview of someone from the Fed. And he said, "No, no, no. The ATMs are going to be fine. The banks are going to be fine. There's going to be there's going to be plenty of cash. There's going to be and he said an infinite amount of cash because of the Federal Reserve." Yeah. 
So that's that's uh, Ben. And then people are worried that Bitcoin isn't backed by anything. There's well, not an infinite amount of anything in this world. Yeah. So how can you say there's an infinite amount of cash and it's still valuable? Yeah, I mean, whatever they say, you do the opposite. You get cash. Um, I mean, uh, well, it's a, like Trump was super excited about his, his stock market bubble. Yeah. Which was from like 18000 to 30000 And now that's all gone. Mm. And so, um, like that guy, um, Gregory Menorino said, I think it... Obama's bubble started at six thousand, so we have all that to go. Like, what is that referencing? Six thousand uh, uh, for the Dow. So, oh, okay. points. Well, yeah, six thousand points. So, like, I mean, we have a very long way to go. And plus, don't just say six thousand because markets overreact on either way. You saw like mm-hmm. Bitcoin or whatever that thing went to twenty thousand. You know, it went from seventeen to twenty like really quickly within like no time at all because it was just overreacting and then like to the downside it overreacted you know to like 30 200 bucks and so and then that was weight that was ridiculous so it's like why not buy yeah. um but good entry point <laughs> yeah so but the now the thing is like they're gonna own everything so yeah. the whole world is awash in u.s dollars right now so, yeah, bringing it back to the deleveraging yeah, is they have to people de-leverage. have so much debt that previously, at least in 2008, there and certainly in 1929, there was uh, a lot of wiggle room for the Fed to adjust the interest rates. But now we they have announced that rates are zero. Um, and so now people who are literally taking out debt just to be able to afford the interest of the current debt that they have that because there's no wiggle room for the fed to help them afford that debt people are selling any kind of asset that they have to be able to pay off the debt because they have to and if they don't they go into default and we're not just talking about people here we're talking about countries like that's why some people um have 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 been saying that there's like a correlation between the crypto markets and like the stock market or something and that's because at this point people need US dollars yeah, and big time and there's not enough to <laughs> go around bitcoin is not US dollars i know so and there's dollar. not enough to go around cuz yeah. all these people like there's, there's 3 trillion US dollar physical cash i think compared to like something like well again in this article in 2016 it was like 63 trillion credit Compared to three trillion or something in cash, but yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of these people, you know, they're international investors own more U.S. assets than U.S. people do. They no, no, actually, no, than U.S. people own international. Yeah, assets, than yeah. own own yeah internationally. So like, I mean, there's a lot of U.S. dollars that need to be in people's hands right now, <clears throat> and not only that. Well, let me show you this. This is crazy. You have. Like the currency markets, I mm-hmm. we study the currency markets because we we travel we tra- a lot. Yeah. But like lately, it's just getting out of control. Like yeah. the U, like the Aussie dollar. Like because we go to Australia, we have friends there, and um, you know now it's it takes one dollar one Aussie seventy four pretty much to buy a dollar. Before when we were there, like about six months ago, it was at one forty six. I mean, it's lost it's literally honest. like thirty-five percent of its value. Yeah. In in no time, and this is like that's just that currency. Then you have the Indonesian rupiah, which when we were there was at fourteen thousand. Now it's at sixteen thousand six hundred per U.S. dollar. Per U.S. dollar. Yeah. And I mean, and the list goes on. I mean, look at the the pound is getting destroyed. Mm-hmm. I mean, eighty-seven pence. You know, well, <laughs> that's that's crazy. Well, it used to be uh, you know sixty or seventy. And now, I mean, these everybody's selling their currencies for U.S. dollars. Like, they're trying to raise U.S. dollars as much as they can. They're, like, desperate to do that. And mm-hmm. I think it's just going to keep going. I think we've seen nothing yet. And that's why it has, yet. it has, okay, like, a lot of people, again, we've been talking about how this is tied in with coronavirus. But we were talking about it this morning, how um, it's... A, a, a small event or like we don't know how long this is going to be affecting things like the travel industry tourism and or, or global trade but the fact that the the even hint of trouble 
due to the coronavirus is like affecting the economy so much. It shows just how delicate it really all was. And it was like, I mean, governments yeah. say that, oh, you're supposed to hold, you know, four to six months worth of cash. Oh, on they actually hedges. give some good advice. Yeah, yeah, to, to do that. But, <laughs> but I mean, look at that. You know, the loud, in, yeah. industries, you know, suffer for two weeks and now yeah. they're freaking out. They need trillion dollar bailouts. Yeah. Come on now. <clears throat> Let's get into this. U.S. unemployment c- hmm. could hit 30% due to coronavirus. They use this virus thing. Fed official B- Bullard said that today. This is crazy. 30%. I mean, in the in the Great Depression, it was 24.9% unemployment. That was the peak. He's saying by second quarter, it's going to reach 30%. This is unheard of. I've never... I could have never guessed what was happening right now. Like this is this is crazy. So, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of pain, and you know they're pretty much they're these guys are bailing out multinational corporations. They're they're mm-hmm. given what the local businesses hardly anything. You know, uh, yeah. let me. I mean, there's once again, who are they bailing out? They're bailing out the ones who are taking out the worst amount of debt. And kind of, you know. Yeah, and, it's horrible. I mean, they're they're gonna give like two thousand dollars for, uh, to people. Uh, what is it? Okay, here, a coronavirus aid bill includes three thousand for families, four um, four trillion liquidity for Fed. Uh, Mnuchin said so. Like, yeah, three thousand dollars per family. Um, Three thousand dollars. Oh, they announced that that's what they're yeah. going to be giving so out to people. So three thousand dollars. Let's let's go over that. Okay, so these are people a thirty percent unemployment. So you go um, three thousand divided by three sixty five. That's eight dollars and twenty one cents a day. Okay, that's ridiculous. Like especially when they're spending for one th- year. For yeah, for one year. I mean, for a thirty percent unemployment for an entire family. You got to be kidding me! Like, and people aren't like up and like pissed off at this. This is yeah. crazy, and they're they're more worried about you know the toilet paper. <laughs> this is nuts. I yeah. just I I literally can't believe it. I mean, the U.S. is pretty much sold off out. Like, there is no more. There's no more. The the U.S. is not the same anymore. It's it's yeah. done. Yeah. Like this is a brand new place yeah we were considering titling this video is this the end of capitalism because of the actions that we're probably going to see the u.s government take place to nationalize a lot of things yeah i mean not only that but i mean u.s government is not wasting any time at all they've actually got rid of habeas corpus which is um uh you cannot uh what it's um sorry I'll read it off to you so I don't like <laughs> Get misrep- it right. misrepresent it. It's pretty much um, habeas corpus is a recourse in law which a person can report an unfa- unlawful detention or imprisonment uh, to a court and request that the court order of the custodian of the person, usually a prison official, to bring the prisoner to court to determine whether detention is lawful. Okay, they got rid of that. So, oh, they did. They weren't just like speculating on it. Rolling Stones, Department of Justice wants to suspend. suspend certain constitutional rights during the coronavirus um, emergency. The Department of Justice has secretly asked Congress to uh, for the ability to uh, detain arrested people indefinitely, in addition to other powers that one ex- excerpt calls terrifying. So no this process. is crazy. So this is similar to the NDAA, which is the National Defense Authorization Act. I think that was that was like a long th- a while ago. But I mean, um, like indefinite detentions, pretty much. So they're they're really like clamor- clamping down on this stuff. Um, it's it's turning into a really scary. Yeah, it's it's. I wouldn't want to be there. Yeah, like, that's that's really nuts, and. I mean, people are going to go along with it because, you know, who knows who they're going to detain? Exactly. I mean, is it somebody for that's for Bitcoin and, exactly. and against the Federal Reserve? And then they'll go after them like, you know what? We need to get rid of these people. That's exactly what can happen. Yeah. And that's why something I'm always harping on on this channel is the importance of privacy and don't hate on anonymity because... 
you never know what side of the fence you're going to fall on when they start changing the rules like we are seeing right here. Like they are setting the stage for them to be able to act however they want and the law will always be on their side. You're not always sure that the law will be on your side. Yeah. So to have, you know, to take your privacy seriously and to have direct custody of something like Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies that are completely detached from that system, uh, I think it's a very wise hedge against more than just your investment. It's like about how your life is set up, really. So, yeah, <laughs> that's scary. I mean, I, sh I should also get into like stocks. Um, okay. Like Mike Maloney, you know, he had a, a good video out today mm. that talked about um, the Buffett indicator where things are undervalued, fair valued, and overvalued and crazily overvalued. And um, I mean, <clears throat> fair value is around 80%. Um, um, yeah, uh, okay, so so right now, like, um, geez, it's it's at 129%. I th actually, I think it's, at, it's under that. Um, so this is, uh, this is this is crazy like how much a uh, company is worth compared to how much the stock is worth um so um like all overall you know the i think uh, the buffett indicator right now is about 110 or 104 um it's got you know a, a ways to go and remember everything like when these things collapse or crash and they they go back to fair value they're always going to over correct um so that's really you got to be careful if if somebody wants to buy stocks right now um i personally would not i'm not a financial advisor or whatever but if yeah if, if it was me i would never i would not touch stocks right now unless you're gonna unless i could short it um i i don't think it's going to you don't know what i mean unlimited quantitative easing they could buy up I mean, they are going to buy up stocks like crazy, but um, we'll see how it works. I don't know. This is we're in completely un uncharted territory mm -hmm. on, on this. Um, so the ways to, I mean, we're going to talk about ways to protect yourself. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about like, okay, so the government is buying up all the stocks, and so they're like majority shareholders of the company. But the the book I, we've been targeting harping on that a lot also is the creature from Jekyll Island mm. and how they talk about companies that have been bailed out and nationalized and how they just become a bottomless pit for money. They ne they don't make money because they have the safety net of the unlimited the Fed? money printing. The Fed? The Fed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're they're what you call a parasite. They add <laughs> nothing and they feed off the host. Yeah. That's what a parasite is. Yeah. So how do you... Well, someone someone did, uh, I wanted to address this IP. He asked, do you think this complete global control is just for the time it takes to do the currency reset? Currency reset. It is a currency reset. Do you think I they're think. going to like a, a central digital bank? Currency. Cur yeah. Yeah. Digi digi digital currency for yeah. sure. I mean, they've already kind of given the... They're, people are kind of like doing it themselves. They, they don't want to use cash anymore because they're scared it has a coronavirus on it or, mm. or something else. So they're like, yeah, yeah, we want just digital, 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 mm -hmm. everything digital. Um, for some countries, it's probably not going to be very efficient, especially like where we live, where, mm. you know, they don't have credit wise. cards. A yeah, lot of, a lot of, yeah. Not a lot of places have credit cards where we like to shop. Um, it's more like local and family run. Um, we're not one of those people that just go out and, you know, buy, go to the main giant shopping center or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to promote it's our local different. local businesses local for sure. Farmers. Yeah, we, we know them all too, <laughs> which is great. So yeah. um, so I think that's going to be really hard for them. We'll see how governments will like implement that, whether or not they'll give them like credit card machines and go, hey, mm -hmm. you guys got to use this, you know. Um, the thing about Por Portugal is that I am a little worried about is because it was a dictatorship and people there are, are some remnants of that still not not the dictatorship but like the mindset of the people here it's, it's very like a, you know author if there's like an authority figure they're like yes yes yeah. yes we, we we must obey yeah which is kind of scary so it's like 
if authority figure says something, people have a hard time thinking for them. Sometimes they have a hard time thinking Very for themselves. Very broad generalities. Yeah, right I shouldn't here, yeah. like. But but it's something I think that you guys get what, my, as, what I'm trying to say. We be, like we've been here for several years now, and as we become more involved in the community, we're going to see that more and yeah. see really how it is. <laughs> but for the so. U.S., I mean, they like they worship the military. Yeah. You know, they worship the police. But but um, also so it's getting getting back to this is like the complete control. Like he's almost IP again is almost asking. Like, will they release that control once the emergency is over? And I don't, like, that I think rarely well, happens through the rules loosen. Like, as far as, like, a digital right? currency? Or, yeah, just, like, this, <clears throat> this wanting, like, they're they're suspending habeas corpus. Like, they're tightening the rules in a way. They are, yeah. I don't I don't see that as, like, <clears throat> once this, uh, <laughs> what is it? Not, not COVID-19 now. It's just called the Rona. Now that the Rona <laughs> passes by. Um, you know, are they going to, is the U S going to like relax again and be like, Oh, you guys can have your rights back. No, I don't think, I mean, there's, I forgot the quote, but something like, um, there's nothing more permanent than a temporary government, government measure. (laughs) So think about that for a second. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary government program or measure. Like if you think for one second that there, your life is going to be the same after this, no way, like no way. There's just. Just like 9 11. That yeah. changed. It was a market point. They did not let that crisis go to waste. No. They, exactly. they put in the Patriot Act so exactly. fast. You're like, how did they write that so fast? Give me a break, man. Yeah. The Patriot Act, I mean, that got rid of the Fourth Amendment, which is like searches and seizures. So, like, they got, see you later. But they named it really nicely. Oh, Patriot. Yeah, yeah you got to be the Patriot, you know? Like, give me a break, man. These guys are crazy. Yeah. So they just want control and you can't pay these guys off because they have a printing press. Mm. So, yeah. So as far as like a digital currency, I think this is like the perfect scenario for uh, for a uh, digital currency because the whole world needs U.S. dollars. Right. So if the world is, you know, countries and central banks around the world are, are needing U.S. dollars. You know, the, the U.S. will be like, well, there's not enough, so we're going to create the, a the digital real currency. And if the real beauty thing, okay, there's, it's like a, a lot of pros and cons there if they pivot to a centralized cryptocurrency, forcing everyone to pay their taxes through it, forcing everyone to be paid in it. Uh, and to, Actually, yeah. And so that will be a very easy way for them to really track where your money is going, what you're holding. Um, But at the same time, they will be opening themselves up much more directly to compete with something like Bitcoin, which is starkly different and something that I, again, on my show, if you guys are at all uh, familiar with my channel, you know that I talk a lot about how Bitcoin is different, why it was created. I think that's something you could hammer home all day long and it's really always a good reminder and hopefully I'm inspiring some of you guys to have conversations with people around you no matter how close-minded they might seem now you never know when you're planting little seeds in people's brains and uh, they might you know come home to roost and like have a decent conversation and really help them out but so well, yeah. L- I mean, let me get to this. Okay, so like the Fed Reserve, they just hired someone someone from Coinbase. I can't find the article right uh, now. The, yeah. But like that just shows that they want a digital currency. Like mm-hmm. if they're bringing somebody on from Coinbase, I mean. And Christine Lagarde was just asking the public for information on Yeah, right. Um, yeah, exactly. Digital currencies, so. so so I think a digital currency is definitely being like rushed right now. Um yeah yeah so okay so so what what should you do like again in all these live streams we've talked about of course buying some bitcoin getting some cash on hand if you can do whatever you can to get yourself out of debt deleverage yourself just like what everyone else around the world is doing and unfortunately a lot of this debt is issued in u.s dollars so a lot of these uh, foreign currencies, like the Aussie dollar especially, I'm sure that's also tied to what's happening with China, um, them being their biggest exporter for uh, coal <laughs> or energy. Yeah, I mean, well, Austra- I mean, China is going to be hurting as well because, like, they rely on the rest of the world for them to buy yeah. stuff from them. And now and everyone s- thinks it's infected with the Rona. 
Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, like for for instance, I mean, I don't think China is going to be able to recover super yeah. fast after this. So maybe maybe a cat when it comes to cash, if you aren't in the U.S., maybe try to get your hands on some U.S. dollars. I feel it feels. Uh, it's really I weird mean, saying for, that for, on this for, channel. For but the short term, yes. like I would definitely hold some cash on hand so that you can buy assets because I think because yeah. this is a... This now, this is, is a, when... this is Sorry, this is when people... Someone made a comment on a, a live video, the last one that we did, that kind of irked me, but it is true. It's like it can... When you position yourself to have an advantageous position in something like this it can almost seem like you're preying on the weak or like you're not feeling bad for the people who are suffering in something like this but if you can position yourself now you can take advantage of when the market changes and you can be in a position to take advantage of whether it's buying property buying crypto when the prices are low whatever but that is the purpose of this channel and of these live streams is to help other people see that shift and to be aware of how they can prepare themselves to take advantage of it and not be on the raw end of the deal. So yeah. it's, it is hard because we are talking about, you know, every, every trade made, there's a winner and there's a loser. And we're trying to help as many people as we can be winners in this trade off. But what? Buy Bitcoin instead of toilet paper. Yeah. Solid advice. Bitcoin, think, blockchain first. Good one. What? Oh. Tell me, do you think that governments will ban centralized exchanges to mm. add... Ex to add, add, add Monero in the future if market cap of Monero reaches one trillion. Mm. Oh, like, uh, are you asking if Monero gets big enough, will governments force centralized exchanges not to list them? I mean, lots of privacy-focused... Sorry, a little puppy dog just walked by. <laughs> lots of, lots of privacy-focused cryptocurrencies have been having trouble getting listed on centralized exchanges. I know Dash was having trouble. Monero is pretty classic for having trouble being listed on crypt on centralized exchanges as it stands. So yeah, I mean anything that could be a really value and really this is when you have to take the, the um, the storyline that the mainstream media or whatever is trying to sell you and understand why and how you can do the opposite and really benefit. They're trying to say these privacy coins are used only for criminals and so you must be a criminal if you're using it. Uh, I think you should hold some <laughs> because that seems like something very valuable that they don't really want you to be taken advantage of. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think a lot of any of these <clears throat> centralized or a lot of centralized exchanges that are doing KYC and AML stuff which we hate. I don't think they're going to be <laughs> shut down because they want to track people. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be, they're going to be the new tool. They are the tools, by the way, the governments are using to track people. Uh, that's because, because of KYC. The, the decentralized <laughs> exchanges are going to get, if they're correct, if they're yeah. done correctly. Yeah. That means, that means nothing like, on Twitter, nothing, no names on there. That means like no CEO, no website, no website where it's, it's a centralized like, server. Dude, it's like an application people, that you run uh, locally on your computer and you interact with people yes. peer to peer way. And like BISC is one. Um, admittedly, I haven't used it as much as I should, but it is a, a decentralized exchange that allows, it's like a fiat on ramp. It allows you to do bank transfers between people uh, without. KYC without identifying yourself to some third party. Um, and to speak even more highly of this, the recently the CEO stepped away from the spotlight. He's still working on the project, but he is not trying to be like the focal leader, leader of, of the platform, which is like an epic sign rather than you see people like, oh my gosh, people all over this space that are getting it wrong, like CZ Binance, like... Justin Sun, just most recently, those are coming put, to mind. I wouldn't put Justin Sun in the same boat as 
or a no, because finance. they're they are happy to take centralized control over platforms. Justin Sun was happy to buy Steam. Um, I'm not saying he was I in the wrong. I'm saying the reason he was even able to buy Steam speaks to how Steam it was organized in the first place. Delegated proof of stake, a centralized <laughs> honeypot of coins that he rightfully bought. Anyway, kicking out all the and delegates the, and the fact that that Binance. Initially, there's so many things that Binance has done that that is just like comical, and so many people, so many cypherpunks and like original Bitcoin OGs would be just uh, turning like not happy about. And like so, CZ Binance like automatically delegated all of the steam that were being held on his exchange to be voting for whatever <laughs> Justin wanted him to vote for. <laughs> Because that was his automatic stance. That was his default status of this, is to take centralized control over something. This summer, like, what? Oh, that was almost like a year ago now, like eight months ago. Do you remember when they had a hack and then they were uh, just entertaining the thought of pausing or, or re resetting the Bitcoin blockchain? Yeah. He wasn't like, oh, no, that is, you know, f- fizzle, fizzle, <laughs> what's the word? Fizzle, fizzle, fizzle. Philosophical. Thank you. Philosophical, <laughs> philosophically wrong in this decentralized space. So there, that is just an example of like, I could go on. Well, let's. I got off. Let's go on. Now. What Sorry. would help these people <laughs> out? Okay. So okay, I listen. I wrote these down. Which order would you put them in? Okay. So Heidi has, get cash, <laughs> silver, Bitcoin, food and water. Obviously, food and water. Come on now, <laughs> that's that's a must. All right. Yeah. Then case. I would hold Bitcoin. Get if you don't have any Bitcoin, I would personally, if I didn't have any Bitcoin right now, I'd be buying right now. <clears throat> doesn't doesn't matter if what the price is. I would be cost averaging like Heidi has been hammering Preaching into up. everybody's heads <laughs> for the last four years. Like buy, you know, yeah. cost average. Budget. Yeah. Okay. After you have that, then have some cash on hand in case yeah. there's another crash. Yeah. Like we have some stink bids into like 4,000. Stink bids. Uh, 4,000. Um, or And um, 3,500 and, you know, a couple couple down there. So like, yeah. Um, and then uh, silver and gold for sure. Yeah. You know, because I mean, it's something physical. That's exactly. great. Um, and also, you know, if you have a house and if you can pay it off, man. Get rid of your Like mortgage. at least you have have a place to live after this. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, if 30 if 30 percent unemployment hits like that's going to be there's going to be a lot of, you know, hurt in the home market and um, people are going to, you know, are going to be struggling big time. And like housing, housing is just going to go collapse. It's, it's going to collapse, you know, and the crime's going to go up. I mean, there's a lot of like ramifications because of that. Mm. Um, so I'm just glad that. You know, I mean, you have Heidi here. She's like the most freaking tr- trustworthy person I've ever met. That's why I married her. Um, and like, she like really cares for you guys. And so that's why she like comes out here and kind of over and over and over again says, hey, you know, use decentralized exchanges. Yeah. You know, get get some Bitcoin if you like weekly. And, and you know, and now she's, you know, bringing up, you know, silver and cash. You know, that's because... Like, I didn't realize how fast people would want, ever want cash mm. before this. And now I see this global de- deleveraging happening f- way faster than I could have ever imagined. This is crazy. So, yeah, get cash. Why not? Like, if you, if, for instance, like, if, if a house or safe safe Bitcoin goes down 20%, well, holding cash, you just made 20%, you know? So... Mm-hmm. Buy it if, if when it drops twenty percent, thirty percent, whatever, forty percent. Mm-hmm. Who cares? It doesn't matter because Bitcoin was literally made for this. Mm-hmm. Like this is why Bitcoin was made in two thousand nine. I mean, it was made before that. It's probably this you is know, why the first transaction of Bitcoin from Satoshi to Halfpenny included the clip of from the the UK newspaper saying banks getting bailed out again. 2008. Yeah. This is why. Yes. So, so yes, this is why we have Bitcoin because of this, because of crazy out of control bankers that don't care about you, that care about their friends, 
that want control over everybody, mm. they can't get your Bitcoin. If you have it memorized, like I do, like they, I can walk anywhere. They, nobody can get it from me. Mm -hmm. Just like, that's fine. They can rob my house, take everything apart. You know, they're not going to get it out of me. Like it's, it's in here. You yeah. can't figure that out. So like that's as secure as possible. Unless I get whacked in the head like a, on a, with a surfboard or whatever, but pretty sure uh, it'll be fine. So, so funny, Alex. some techniques about hiding your physical gold. Yeah. Well, if I give that away, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like what we've done is for your house, I mean, I mean, anywhere. Somewhere inconspicuous, but you won't forget about it. <laughs> like maybe an, ug uh, an ugly TV set and yeah. put it inside one of the... We yeah. use some interesting thoughts about getting like a safe because it's kind of like if you're if someone is going through your house, they're like, oh, that's where all the expensive things are. And they can just take it. Yeah, so maybe like exactly. I mean, I depends have... like what your disposable income is at this point of like investing I mean, in something like really inconspicuous that is a safe in your house could be interesting. But yeah, I mean, put it in your, your roof or yeah. You know, oh, someone floor I remember a concrete block. I always remember this comment on a video like years ago, his idea for, and if you're still, if whoever, I can't remember who left this comment, but. You sure this, you won't forget your seeds? Yes, I <laughs> am definitely sure. This guy, his idea was to engrave his private keys into like a titanium or some kind of metal that won't erode um, into his. Uh, roof slacks pretty much and like that's where it is that's, and we'll a, that's never really go good because you're never going to figure that yeah, out yeah I mean but if your house burns down that might suck but <laughs> but if it's titanium it's fine yeah yeah that's good so. Um, yeah so there's plenty of ways to do this you know for me I like I have a really good memory when it comes to things like this so I'm like yeah that's fine hmm. easy so yeah. yeah anyways so so yeah guys get Get ready in case there's a um, another like liquidity sell off. Um, mm. Get some cash. Get some U.S. dollars. Don't get any other currency right now because that. Um, I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't. I, yeah. Yeah. This is not financial advice. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just <laughs> saying, like, uh, get cash. I would get cash. Um, U.S. For a dollars. Few months at least. I don't know. Yourself. It depends on like just watch the market. There's different scenarios for getting cash. There's like getting cash in case like. You I mean, can't get cash or getting cash so that you can take advantage of, of investing in something that you've had your eyes on and now you have an opportunity to buy it. So I think that Heidi would make her move on, on either Twitter <laughs> or like if she's oh, going to buy some Bitcoin, I think that's oh. what Heidi's going to plan on doing or on our website. So we're we're kind of fixing up that website. Oh, like when are you learning, trying to call the bottom? Learning. <laughs> well, no, no, no. When when I mean, I don't care if I miss 20%. Like it doesn't matter if it free falls. Like who cares yeah. if we miss 20%? Like it's say yeah. for instance if if somebody sold Bitcoin at 16,000 and then missed the 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 run to 20, who cares, you know? Like yeah. you scored um so yeah have cash on hand just in case whatever this market does i mean right now just just patience you yeah. know what i mean there's no point of rushing into this market um the only way i would rush into this market a little bit is if i didn't own any bitcoin yeah but, but it's also good advice it's like um you know don't be too in my opinion i don't think you should be too heavily uh positioned in any one thing like it or anything that you're not comfortable with to the point where you will make like an emotional, maybe irrational investment decision. Uh, like if say you've been dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and suddenly you have a lot of Bitcoin and you're freaking out about the price of it, then do what you need to do to stay comfortable within that investment. That's like, I know, however you feel about it, but try to, to have as even a keel of a position as you can so you can continue to make rational decisions. Yeah. Uh, this guy. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it. <laughs> tattoo your private keys on top of your head like Hitman. <laughs> would you let me tattoo you? On Definitely top of your not. Head? I wouldn't need it. <laughs> do some prison tattoos. Here. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you can't do it. You'd have to tattoo it yourself. You can't give it to the tattoo artist. Or do a QR code. <laughs> yeah. 
so anyway. um but anyways yeah so that's that's pretty much all i have right now international liquid please talk about how to store gold oh, well i mean i guess if you're Physical if gold. you are in the united states that's hard that is the crutch of you gold is that maybe is... send it to singapore you know, a vault in Singapore. That's what we did with with our silver. And then fly out to Singapore to access it. I mean, we can we can sell it over there. So yeah. I mean, Mike Maloney has a good company that that um, allows has for that. Custody for that. Yeah. yeah. So it's really easy to use, and you can buy buy it with Bitcoin, which is great. So and they'll give you like three percent off, which is perfect. You know, now it's at what twelve buck twelve dollars right now. Like that's. Kind of a steal, I think, but you know, depending on how but much people sell off exactly. everything, it could go way lower. Well, also, what is being like the the displayed price of silver isn't necessarily the same price that you will be that someone is going to be. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a huge bifurcation yeah. between like um, the spot price of silver, which is like twelve something. Good luck finding tw- uh, somebody to sell you twelve dollar, like giving somebody twelve bucks for. it. Four ounce of silver, not yeah. a chance. I mean, they're going for like eight to ten dollars. So over... why? I don't know if you know this. Why isn't that reflected in the spot price? Because the spot price is all paper contracts. Oh. There's no like. It's not actually physically. It's, 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 it's kind of like all the money that that the Fed just prints. It's just like it's yeah. meaningless. It's just like they have a, a a desk in London, a desk in New York, and they go ahead and like trade mm-hmm. each other pa- paper contracts all day long to manipulate the price of silver and gold. And that's what they've been doing for a long time. That's why if you do a, a simple DuckDuckGo search, a uh, s- simple search online and go JP Morgan manipulation silver. And, and you just see article after article after article <laughs> after article. Like these guys are so, I mean, they don't do anything that benefits anybody but themselves. They because are, they're like, a business. Li- and- no, they're, they're they're they are a government. They're not a business. This is a government. But if you combine government with corporations, you know what you get. It's the big F. I'm not gonna say it on here. Fascism. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of what you're actually getting hmm. with, especially while with all this, uh, the government bailing out corporate debt and buying up companies. I mean, what other? I I don't really know what is it. I don't know another name for it. That seems like fascism. Hmm. So maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong, and I'll say I'm sorry for saying that's We've a fascist away decision. For minutes. I just realized that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so with that said. Yeah. Uh, um, Two weeks. Oh, for GoldSilver.com. That's crazy. All right. Well, um, I certainly enjoyed this live stream. Did you? Enjoy I did. It, Toby? I, I love it. Oh, good. Exactly. Me too. I yeah. really enjoy these. So it's great. This is my passion. This is Heidi's yeah, passion. Sure. It's. I really enjoy. Heidi having knows so way much more too. about Bitcoin and blockchain than me. Yeah, we have two different, but I, I think they complement. It's great. Yeah, definitely great. It's good for a conversation. Yeah, because they can coincide. Like, I mean, we can work together and kind of figure out things of what, how this is all going to work. Whereas yeah. if you have just the Bitcoin side and you don't understand like the global macroeconomic view. It's going to be a lot harder for you to figure out like yeah. where everything's going. So, but um, definitely if you have guys... to study the old world a little bit, yeah, and then the new world as well. Check out the creature from Jekyll Island. Check out uh, Ray Dalio. Check out this article that I linked to in the video description. I highly recommend you at least read the article. It's not that long, and it's really interesting to see the the debt cycles and kind of how this makes sense of where we are right now. Um, so yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this live stream. I always forget to, in the middle of it, encourage you guys to leave a like if you enjoy this, to share it out so other people can. Yeah, subscribe, because we are like literally being, I mean, I'll, I think I'll say, Toby thinks we're being shadow banned. We're totally being shadow banned. We have, we've been stuck with no ad, ads, like nobody subscribing at all for the last month. It's been like, a give or take of like, month. yeah, not that much. Like, give me a break, you anyway. know? Like, Regardless, Whatever. I'm going to keep pumping out material. Of course. Um, if you guys want to support this channel or if you don't want to take part in YouTube, I am posting these videos also onto Library, uh, the decentralized video hosting platform. So you can find me there also, Crypto Tips, if you're interested. In the meantime, 
I will be coming to you again soon. Again, I have no idea what the next video is going to be on, but it's going to be, be great. interesting. And fun, exciting. <laughs> Maybe explosive. something lighthearted. If you guys have any... <laughs> no, nah, that's not fun. <laughs> Come on, we want to talk memes, about some crazy stuff, right? Memes? Yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, um, thank you guys again, and we'll be seeing you soon. Uh, and yeah, again, heads up for these live streams, as always, on Twitter, Instagram, and on the community tab here on this channel. All that information can be found in the video description. Okay. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Bye.